This is Groundless, a Justified podcast. This is a podcast where we watch every episode of Justified and then come on here and talk about it. I'm Chris. That man is Randy. And ladies and gentlemen, it has come to this. It has indeed. That sound you hear in the background is you'll never leave Harlan alive, which means only one thing. It means this is season six, episode 13 of Justified, the season six finale, The Promise. Also happens to be the series finale of Justified, which is a very odd thing for me to be saying <laughs> as I do this <laughs> podcast. You know, whatever, uh, t- uh, what is it, 52 plus 26 is 78 episodes of Justified. Later, we are here. <laughs> and yeah. uh, our, our, so this episode now originally aired April 14th, 2015. And uh, our synopsis, Raylan, Boyd, and Ava fight one last bloody battle to find out who leaves Harlan alive and uh, written by it's the cast of, of uh, thousands this time around Graham Yost, Fred Golan, Dave Andron, Benjamin Cavell, all names that we are very familiar with, all names that are affiliated, that are that, that are justified through to their bones and uh, directed by our one and only Theo Tonin, uh, Adam Arkin uh, so, so we've got the, the bona fides, as they say, for the, uh, for the, uh, the writers and directors of this episode. <clears throat> now, uh, uh, before we get into, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, before we jump in the door and take a quick trip back and look at what was going on the week of April 14th, 2015, we have, uh, a couple of things we want to get to. The first is, uh, don't forget to give us a, uh, a give us five and a sub that means a five star review uh, a hopefully a written review and a subscription uh, in your podcast app um, please please go ahead and do that if you haven't already I know this is the last episode of the show so hopefully you have done it already but but we've got more to come and uh, that was kind of the second thing I wanted to talk about which is what's next for the justified podcast and or for the uh, groundless podcast rather and uh, we'll have some announcements around that coming up in the next few weeks. We're going to have a, uh, a special episode here coming up in a couple of weeks where uh, Randy and I will sit down, talk a little bit about the overall series, our opinions on the series, sort of favorite moments, least favorite moments, favorite characters, sort of overarching things, what we'd like to see if we were to get another seri- season of Justified. And, uh, and of course, we'll talk a little bit about uh, what we're going to do next, which may or may not revolve around a, uh, a, uh, a, a nighttime soap opera set in Southern California. <laughs> so, so spoiler alert. <laughs> Is it really a spoiler if it may or may not, may not be? Can you give you that qualifier? <laughs> it's true, right? The qualifier really just uh, just eliminates everything, doesn't it? <laughs> so... All right. And then we have one correction from last time. So uh, our good friend, Michael, uh, who was our guest star during the uh, the City Primeval podcast, uh, reached out to inform me that I had misstated uh, a little bit, misstated uh, sort of the the succession of property uh, when when someone dies without a will. And in California, he's absolutely correct. Community property and and any community property state sort of complicates uh, this. So so there's community property and individual property. And uh, yeah, uh, the community property generally passes to the spouse when there's children involved, they get uh, a portion of the individual property. So it's, it's, it's a little more complicated. Uh, check with your legal expert in the state that you live in for, for information on that. But thank you, Michael, for, uh, for that correction. And, uh, uh, we do appreciate it. And, and by the way, we appreciate you, uh, your, your, uh, your appearance on our podcast earlier this year. So thank you. So, uh, before we get into the uh, details of this episode, which there's obviously there's a lot that happens, a lot to talk about here uh, in, in episode 13, let's very quickly take a quick trip back to the week of April 14th, 2015, and just see what was going on in pop culture at that time. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? 
Had a bit DeLorean? We did. And uh, our number one movie, uh, same as last week, Furious 7, uh, for another $73 million. <laughs> so they're uh, in two weeks, uh, $265 million, a quarter of a billion dollars for Furious 7 in two weeks uh, in the theaters. That's That's pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, and now they're up to Fur- uh, Furious. Uh, they're making Furious Eleven. Uh, yes, so. they are. Yeah, yeah. No, there's a. I, I guess, I guess the whole idea with this last one was that it was a three parter. I think. I think it's like uh, the episode or if you're Fast X, Fast Eleven, and then Fast Twelve, and that's where they're going to end the series, uh, as I understand it. So it's mm. like it's sort of like the uh, the thing they're doing with the Mission Impossible, you know, where they're where they where they kind of announced that there was going to be a sequel before they even released the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. And so that's what's that's what's happening with the uh, the Fast and Furious because it definitely ended on a uh, a little bit of a cliffhanger there. So yeah, yeah. How long after they finish the this uh, the series will they have a reboot? I'm guessing like the over is like five years or something like that. Five years we get uh, who who would be, uh, I don't see, I don't know any young actors and like on that Nickelodeon or whatever, who would be the, the Mark Sinclair role on, uh, in fast, the new fast reboot. <laughs> but, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that'll be, uh, that'll be something. Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll uh, reboot it with a female star. Maybe that's what they'll do. Oh, that's Maybe right. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. They'll have like to do Selena that. Selena Gomez be on... or something. Yeah, or Anna Darman. Oh, she might even be too old by then. She's too old. Yeah, she's too old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, unless yeah, they do right. like, we... uh, unless they do like, uh, what was the? What were those movies? Uh, the Red? Were they Red? Was it Red with the old secret agents? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, they all the retired <laughs> the uh, Red yeah. style. Yeah, yeah. That was a trilogy too. I think it was. Red, yeah, Red One, Two, and Three. <laughs> Yep. I never saw any of those. I don't know. I, I, I saw the trailers. I never saw the movies. I saw, I think I saw the first one and yeah. it was good. It was yeah. fine. Okay. It wasn't like, uh, I don't know. It wasn't exciting. Uh, it was exciting, but it wasn't like, Oh, I, I gotta go watch the next two. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it's hard to, it's hard good. to mess up a spy movie, right? It, it's really hard to yeah. mess up like a secret agent sort of, uh, you know, spy action movie. Like there's yeah. a formula, you follow the formula, you, you make a pretty decent movie. Yeah, yeah, and then the the actors are are good in it. Are you know they're all older, obviously, but Malkovich and Bruce well Brilla, Bruce Willis, man. Yeah, oh, <laughs> and uh, who's the other one? Morgan uh, Freeman, I think he's in there. Helen Mirren, yeah, and Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder. <laughs> I do wonder, uh, like uh, you know, like how how often they can go. Uh, well, how long will it be before they reboot that one too? <laughs> because everything is getting <laughs> That's rebooted. That's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm thinking about like the fast, fast and furious instead of Tyrese, it's like post Malone or something <laughs> adopted for a uh, Netflix. You know, like, yeah, exactly. yeah. They're going to turn, they'll turn it into a TV, to a series, a TV series. That's what they'll do. That's, 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 right, that's right. Well, we're not going to make movies. We're going to make a series, a TV series. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, I saw that. I posted on. I tweeted it out. Like there was that one remake of Schindler's List, and they had that black lady on there. Oh, jeez! <laughs> and not. it was well presented. <laughs> See what I've always said about Schindler's List is there's not enough jokes. That's what I've always said. About yeah. Like, yeah, there is it. Sort of been a gag reel at the end of that one. Yeah, can you imagine that that set? You know, just no, misery every no, day. No, I know. Like, like, it, it, like no, no movie has ever needed Leslie Nielsen more. Like, <laughs> I know. <He's> like, <laughs> you know, he used to here. walk around with a, a whoopee cushion. That was like his shtick. Like he he'd yeah. do like a whoopee cushion on set, and like it would be like that's the joke, right? It's the whoopee cushion. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's very yeah. funny to me that he would do stuff like that. <laughs> God, they need to remake that because you know I, I guess Ned, listen he he made his uh, like his career originally doing those like seventies like disaster movies oh, yeah. you know like yep. uh, and then he he just started doing the comedy and that's what he got known for late late in his career because he, he must have been like yeah he was old when uh, when he started in Police Squad <laughs> yeah well you you know they are remaking it right they're remaking Police Squad they're making they're they're rebooting the Naked Gun. <gasps> Yeah, you know How with you they? know you know with who? Well, well, Seth MacFarlane's writing it. 
Um, oh my god! Yeah. Okay. And, uh, right. and, and okay. And uh, you know who's going to star in it? No, who? I don't know who you are. I don't know what you are. Are you want. kidding me? I don't have any money. What I do have is a very particular set of skills. It's <laughs> Liam Neeson's. Liam Neeson's. Wow! I how, how did I not hear about that? Okay. <laughs> Well, th- this will be interesting. Let's see. It will, it will <laughs> certainly be interesting. That's a good way to say it. I, I yeah. It's one of those things where I'm like, oh, I am very skeptical. <laughs> very, very yeah. skeptical. I mean, those movies are so perfect. It's it's going to be hard to... It's it's. I, you know what I think it's going to be? I think it's going to be fine. I think it'll be like the new Fletch movie that they did with John Hamm, which was fine. It wasn't bad. It wasn't particularly good. It was funny-ish. But it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't a Fletch. It didn't feel like a Fletch movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll see. I guess. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I who are they going to cast as OJ as Norberg? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. I've got a surprise for you. We have brought back OJ. <laughs> Redemption they, arc, baby. No, 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 oh, no. Yeah, no. That's that's right. Right. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Still my favorite. Everybody scene of deserves all time. a second chance or a third chance. Yeah. Or a fourth. Yeah. Or a fourth. <laughs> Everybody deserves a, a Even second chance. Even people who cut waiters' heads off. For, for double murder. Yeah. yeah. Everybody deserves a second chance from double murder. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard about that that woman who, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going down a real rabbit hole here. <laughs> you heard about that woman who, uh, who murdered her fiance or whatever and stabbed him like a hundred times and the judge let her off because he, she said it was pot psychosis. Oh, oh, I think I saw that. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. That's crazy. Everybody deserves a second chance. <laughs> Yeah. Still, my favorite scene of all time is OJ like going into that boat. <laughs> he goes in and they're all there looking at him. <laughs> they all have guns pointed at him. He goes in there, uh, uh, police squad, <laughs> and then the one guy drops the gun, and all the all the other guys look at him. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? <laughs> It's so good. It's so perfect. Such a great movie. It's all oh, our Nordberg. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> oh boy! All right. God, well, maybe we should do an episode of Naked Gun. Oh. <laughs> just, I, I, I actually, like I actually, I actually wouldn't mind. Jokes. I think it's a little bit difficult to find, but I actually wouldn't mind watching the old like uh, Police Squad TV show episodes. That I think would be. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. If you could find them, though, right? Yeah, I think it's a little bit tricky to find those because I think there's some licensing issues or whatever, but... (laughs) That's my favorite joke, too, the... uh... That guy, when Leslie Nielsen, when he he breaks into some uh, guy's office and uh, the guy's all, who are you? How did you get in here? And the guy, Leslie Nielsen, goes, I'm a locksmith, and I'm a locksmith. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've been swimming in raw sewage. I love it. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, man. That's such a great... All right. All right. So our number one okay, top 40 yeah. song in uh, the week of April 14th, 2015. Uh, Uptown Funk. Surprise. It made it oh, the wow. entire season. 14 weeks. So it, it, it for those who uh, have been paying attention, Uptown Funk was in its second week at number one when we uh, started looking at these episodes justified. It ran the entire season. And hilariously, uh, the week of April 21st, it's replaced at number one <laughs> by uh, See You Again with Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth. So uh, that takes over for several weeks, uh, starting next week after the show airs. So interesting. Uh, season six of Justified and Uptown Funk have that in common. They ran at exactly the same time. They were they were uh, J- Justified aired for every moment that Uptown Funk was uh, at number one on the charts. So I thought that was a really cool sort of uh, thing that happened here. Very very serendipitous. I can't even think of what that. You said it was Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth. 